Back here in D.C., and of course we talked about it before, as Tim Murphy won away from the record to tie Carm Coza for most wins by an Ivy League coach. Again, Tim Murphy, what a great time he's had at Harvard. Oh, my God, and it seems like he's only been there for a short period of time because Al Bagnoli is right there third on that list. He's passed Bagnoli, who's been a legend, <laughs> I'm actually shocked to see that number, but it, it's, it shows you how dominant Harvard has been under Murphy. Yeah, they've been just so great. And actually, over the last few years, they've had a bit of a downturn, of course. They did not uh, win an Ivy League title. And it's funny, talking to Coach Murphy, he was pretty flat out about it. He said, look, I tell our alumni, like, look, what we did isn't supposed to happen in the <laughs> Ivy. Like, I think he told us the number was – they had 16 straight seven-win seasons, the next highest in the Ivy. The next highest number was like six, all time. And, that's, and obviously, you play a few more games than you did back in the day, but still, it's a pretty impressive run that he has put on at Harvard as Brunel out on the edge, throws it to Portobanco, has a completion for about seven yards on the play. But back to Coach Murphy, again, it's, a, it's just been amazing. And that run that they had, I believe it was a nine – uh, nine Ivy League championships since he's been there. I think it was a, of a run of about like 11 years where or nine years where it was six first places and three seconds. Mm -hmm. Second and two, Stakely trying to find a hole. He does not. Gets it back to the line of scrimmage and not much more. And he openly admitted to us that he probably had at least three Ivy teams that could have went into the FCS playoffs and won the championship. So third and two here. And you look at Harvard, and so far they have completely dominated on the ground. That is not a number you like if you're Rob Scarlotta. That's if I was out there running today. Pass to the flat. Stakely makes the catch. He will lean forward, and I think he has the first down. I was going to make the point uh, before the break that Harvard, or sorry, Georgetown coming out will be best suited going into their four-minute offense. Take as much time as, the as you can off the clock. Their offense has had success moving the football. Get yourself in scoring position, and that way you kind of kill it on both ends. Help your defense out, but also get points up on the board before half. Gowan made the tackle, but just couldn't keep Stakely away from the sticks. Brunel out on the edge. Tomas will make the catch, then tries to get forward, and he'll lose that forward progress he had originally if he had gone down after the first contact, I think he has about five yards and Teddy gets two. And, and that's the first time we've seen him go to Tomas in the second quarter. He was heavily involved in the first part of the drive. Maybe they switched things up, but uh, you got to find ways to get him back involved. And, and that's something that they want to get started here as they try to close out the half. That's Max Jones, the starting safety, walking off. He was a preseason all-Ivy pick in 2020 before the pandemic shut things down. We talked about it, really a 4-3 alignment all the time for Harvard, no real nickel. Blitz coming, Brunel will get away from it, throws it deep, and it will be incomplete. A heady play by Brunel as that was on the ground. I think he was thrown off a bit by the blitzing Jordan Hill, but somehow got it away and almost got a completion. Yeah, he almost got it to Creighton. Creighton had the post wide open. Maybe that's where they're going. It was going to be a shot play. But like I said, they, they have the matchups they want outside. You talk about Tomas, you talk about Creighton, and you also bring in, you know, the, the young kid. They're going to they're gonna find these one-on-one -on -one individual matchups and take advantage of. That's how they're going to have to get back into this game. Call to third and eight. Need to take it out to the 45 for a first down. Harvard brings pressure. Wide open is Creighton. He makes the catch. He'll cut it back and be cut down around the 30-yard line as a touchdown saving tackle by Victor Tatamy, but another big chunk play for the Hoyas to Cameron Creighton. We just talked about it. That's where they have the matchups. That's a senior led in play right there by Brunel. He see the blitzer coming off the edge. Like, you know what? They're blitzing from that side. They're also vulnerable from that side. He was wide open. That's a bust in coverage. Found him deep down the field. Nice chunk play for, for Georgetown. Big win for the Hoyas as they look for six before the half. Brunel keeps. He'll be cut down and Gets high load on that one, but comes up looking okay. But, again, that's not something you want to do a lot of if you're the quarterback as those Harvard guys come with malice in their eyes. <laughs> and it's a good job right there by 
Harvard's defense, they had every aspect of that play covered. They wanted to hit the bubble out there on the perimeter if they were going to crash down. And they had a guy sitting right there in the flat, but they covered every aspect of that play. Good movement by Nelson to go in and get right back out. Out in the flat, it's Creighton, makes the catch, brought down short of the sticks after a gain of about five. Creighton has quietly become the go-to guy offensively in the passing game. And he did a great job here catching the football and just getting what he could by just turning up field. Georgetown did a great job offensively, man. This, this is what you want to see from a, from a team that's down 21. You know what? You can't get it all back in one play, but we're going to try to take as much time as we can to move down the field to try to get at least one score out of it. And Rob Spence told us that, look, you know, a couple early mistakes by us, that's a completely different game against Delaware State. You really want to get that offense going for a Patriot League play. Nice snatch by Tomas. Says he keeps the pile moving, and they still haven't blown it dead. And finally they do, as it's a gain of around seven on the play and a first down. I've been very impressed with Brunel. He's throwing the football decisively. He's throwing it accurately. He's making great decisions with the ball. The ball has come out where it needs to be on time, and these receivers are just playing a fantastic game. Another thing that Rob Scarlotta told us, Emery, was the fact that he thinks he and Rob Spence, the offensive coordinator, are on the same page. They work really well together. And you've seen that today, that everything's looked comfortable for Brunel. Stakely, good hesitation, bounces to the outside. He'll be hit and stopped at the 15-yard line, so only a gain of around three on the play. Looked like it might break for more. Yeah, he had the patience inside, and I thought he was going to accelerate Probably made one too many cuts, but still sticking with some parts of the run game is, is always key because you never know when it's going to pop. And look at the clock. They, they've already taken about three minutes off. Cam Pygat, new receiver in there for the Hoyas. Brunel. Throws it deep, and that's incomplete. Looking for Portobanco as he had a linebacker on him, but not a good ball by Joe. At some point, they're going to get him. They're maybe going to tell him at halftime or on the sideline. That running back in the flat has been open every time, but the progression takes him to read the front side of the field. They're going to have to let him scan the entire field and get that ball out to the back quickly and let that guy get out in space and make a play. Little miscommunication, and Rob Scarlotta going to have to take a timeout as they might have had too many men on the field. So Georgetown will talk it over with 2.02 left to go here in the second quarter. And again, such a big drive right now for the Hoyas as they need points, and really they need six. They need six, and normally I'm all team points add up. Uh, if you have to on fourth down, yeah, you want to try to get some points, but you're right. They really need uh, a touchdown. And, and, you know, I wouldn't even put it past them to go for two in this situation as well. Get it on the 13 uh, by it being 30 to 9. Of course, Rob Scarlotta, his seventh season. And he is the perfect coach, I think, here. Oh, absolutely. As he's a Georgetown lifer. He played here. I think he had one season away where he was working in the business world, came back as an assistant, and most importantly, Emory, he knows how this place works, and that's so important. That is huge. He understands Georgetown's culture. Third and eight, Crimson showing pressure. They'll hand off on the draw. Moultrie's got something, spins off one man. He'll be brought down to Demi with that first hit, and it'll be short of the sticks, and now we'll see what Rob Scarlotta goes with. A fourth and five, and it looks like they're going to go for it. I thought that had a, a, a chance to really pop into the end zone. It had promise. Good job by Harvard recovering and make a play. See if they may try to draw them offside to get a free first down here. Yeah, fourth and five with about 90 seconds to go in our opening half. They're going to go for it. Brunel throws it deep, and that will be a miscommunication way off, and Harvard holds says the Hoyas will come up empty. Yeah, you want to give your receiver a chance to either go up and make a play or try to draw a pass interference call. A ball out of bounds serves no one, you know, uh, in that situation. Probably could have gotten a better play call then. So 121 left to go, and we'll take it to a timeout as Georgetown trailing Harvard here in D.C.